worker. So it malfunctioned on me and it never set off the alarm. Two millisieverts is, is like the background radiation for a person each year. I had 12.8 in a span of 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. You want to start by introducing yourself to the extent you're allowed to. So hello, my name is Battle Cow. I am a 21-year-old musician slash DJ nowadays, but I'm a former uh, nuclear engineer or more of an instrument technician. It's kind of hard to translate it to the English terms, but yeah, so I'm, a, I'm an instrument technician that worked uh, in a nuclear power plant for a period during while I, while I was studying to become an electrician. I was working there for, for like a month at max because it, like, it was like a summer thing. I eventually, uh, during the final year of my uh, studies, I dropped out because I had a electrical accident and I just which is not related to my story regarding the incident, like the, uh, as I like to refer as the Chernobyl incident. <laughs> <laughs> um, still affects me into bits and pieces because uh, I'm now suffering from a few health conditions. Like finding out stuff regarding my condition, like there's not much information out of it because it's like such a unheard of thing. Because like uh, incidents like this is like so fucking rare. But nowadays, after uh, the whole thing, I started working in security. So a lot of times I do crowd security and worked in stagehands. So there was a single incident that you wanted to talk about, right? But there was also some backstory about the actual job before that. So let's start with that. I guess we can start about uh, the process of getting, uh, getting the job, which was quite interesting. I am so sorry. Hold on. I thought somebody was at my door. Jesus Christ, they're already coming for me. <laughs> <laughs> it started off while I was studying to become an installation electrician. Like, I had no interest whatsoever to, like, it, it was just pure, in like, coincidence that I uh, got this opportunity to work as a nuclear engineer. Basically, I was approached by my by my parent because they had, like, contacts with a, with a company. Uh, eventually, I was reached out to... Uh, like I, I basically called him up and I was like, Hey, hello, I'm a, my name's this, this, and this, my name's Battle Cow. Uh, uh, I, I'm currently studying to become an installation electrician, which is kind of the same branch, like regarding how it works. It's a very huge bra branch in the electricity, uh, scene, if you will. There, we need a lot of people in automation. We need a lot of people in IT. There goes so much into this. Like it's, it's absurd on, uh, how big it is. Like it's such a big project just to keep up a nuclear power plant. And at the same time, it's one of the most safest things on earth. Like you are more likely to the average desk job worker, you're more likely to get injured at a desk job than actually get injured at a nuclear power plant because of how extremely high the safety standards are. Well, it depends on which country. I personally will not name where exactly I'm from because of security reasons. So it's like, it's a very big thing. It's a, it's a very big uh, project. They always need uh, people. So you have the company that owns the nuclear power plant, which the company is owned by the government. Basically, this company will hire other companies to work for it. So they have like different specialties. For it. We have actually a lot of international workers. I worked with a lot of Russians. I worked with a lot of Danish folks. I worked with a lot of Finnish people, actually. There were a lot of, actually quite a few Finns. The Russians were actually the, the be, like the best people to work with because they were like super chill don't have the best record with nukes but you know <laughs> the irony but they were they were quite amazing people they were fantastic people to work with my company they were ser searching students so the potentially what what the plan was for me uh, was to get hired during my studies like get hired and start working there i guess it's an internship but i still got paid boy oh boy uh you get paid quite a lot if you work for the government pretty much they'll treat you well let's just say that much boy how things were easy back then um <laughs> i basically got in contact with my company and i basically got the boss's number and i reached out to him it's like hey my name is battle cow i am a student an installation electrician and yada 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 do you potentially have a job for me right and he's like okay sure uh come over uh come over to the company tomorrow like to the to the building like the office will get you sorted immediately so there, there was no, not even an interview process there he was like okay you in now great so i went to the whole thing got like an information pamphlet i had to get medically examined see if i'm fit i had to take a blood test drug uh, drug test everything just to make sure that i was clear the day I actually went to the site for the first time, which was, oh my God, was 
It's one of the most awesome thing. It was like the most coolest fucking shit ever because I get like, because like it was like exciting for me because like I get to go into the, uh, like I get like, you know, driving up to it. You already can see the big buildings. You can see the big buildings. Like my boss was like giving a tour of it. The first day, like I get my card, like my key card and shit, get my personal decimeter, uh, get all, all, all the stuff that I need. And this is when I got my security clearance. Considering everything that's like nuclear based in my country is government secret. I immediately got a government uh, security clearance regarding that sector, which basically is my NDA. And this is the thing where I'm like the most concerned about, because if I say something wrong, that can either a they can, depending on the severity, they can either find the shit out of you. They can they can ruin your lives. Like if you mess up in regarding that, if you say literally anything, that's like breaking NDA. They will mess you up. After I got my security clearance, I was pretty much starting working the next day. First day, it was it was quite an experience. During those periods, I was working uh, doing revisions. So what is a revision? Well, a revision is when they basically hire a shit ton of people. Like it's pretty much what I was doing. So they basically hire a shit ton of people and they work in upkeep of a uh, nuclear reactor because they're like cl shutting it down. And those revisions happen annually. Okay. So you do this annually of every reactor. So in my place, it was three. There were three. I, I worked in the, uh, the oldest one. The first day was quite interesting. I drive up, I live like in a town that's like an hour away. So I always had to get up at 5 a.m. And I am not an early person at the time. I was not an early person. So this was already hell for me at the start. So my boss would pick me up because I did not have my, I, I didn't have, and I still don't uh, have my uh, driver's license. So drive up, go to the nuclear power plant, took like an hour's drive from like my shift starts at seven. Checking in doing all my stuff and I get introduced to my coworkers. So the first point uh, was just like, uh, I had like a major fucking scare. So I need to kind of explain how nuclear, uh, like how nuclear power plants work. So for context, a nuclear power plant like that works on fission is basically a giant boiler. It takes water to cool the reactor down uh, and sometimes uh, uses water to basically heat the water. So basically there's like two types of water. So there's like the cooling water and then there's the uh, cooking water, if you will. And that water basically boils up and spins like a giant uh, turbine that produces electricity. And it's like one of the most, most cleanest type of energy. It has the smallest CO output with excluding a nuclear waste, which is also, well, it depends on which country it is. But at the time, the, the place I worked at had a lot of awards because it had the most safest protocols and it had the most efficient way and the most cleanest way of disposing of nuclear waste. We're doing some simple work. This is the first day and it's like a low radiation zone. It's like actually quite simple. I'm in here like in a yellow jumpsuit. So basically what you do is before you enter the area, like the controlled environment, if you will, so you get into a yellow jumpsuit, you walk in and you go to where you need to go. So basically a lot of times uh, you have like a decimeter, like you have actually two decimeters. So we go in and honestly seeing the nuclear reactor itself this is like a very touchy thing and i can't really speak into it seeing that shit was absolutely the most coolest moment in my fucking lifetime it's such a fascinating thing like seeing the whole thing itself and it's like the most amazing engineering wonder that humankind has ever come up with so like uh, i get a little tour and then we start doing our job he goes hey battle Battle, uh, I'm, I'm doing like this, like working on a little fuse box. Like, could you disconnect the, the fuses, like specific fuse names? And I'm like, sure, go ahead. This was kind of memed on by my, by my coworkers quite a lot. Cause I had like such a massive scare because right above, like I was like in right, right above me were like the massive pipes that basically suck in all the cooling water from the ocean. It's like the most loudest thing. I was just like going to it and like the fuse box right underneath it. And I'm just like pulling out the things like, okay, fuse number one, very good. Fuse number two, very good. Fuse number three, great. Fuse number four, oh boy. Little did I not know that they were shutting down uh, the reactor so they can start working on it. And right when I pulled the fuse four out, just the fucking pipes above me just stop. Uh, like they're being shutting down. They just stop as I pulled it out and it just goes. And I'm like, oh, 
Oh, <laughs> start, start putting, putting the fuses back in. <laughs> I, felt, I pulled, pulled the fuse out because I didn't know what the hell I was doing, right? I was just freshly new. So it's like doom, 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 trying to push it in as I see my uh, see Jake over there just laughing his ass off. He's literally in tears. Like this motherfucker is just in tears. And it became a little bit of a meme. It was the funniest first day at work experience I ever had. So we finish our work. Lunch comes around, you know, it's general lunch. And the best part of it, you can drink beer as a nuclear worker during lunch. That's kind of worrying. Yeah. It's not like you, you, can, you can't like get absolutely shit faced at the job. Like, don't get me <laughs> wrong. But it was, it was great for me because I love beer. Like, I'm, 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 very much, I'm very much a beer connoisseur, if you will. After that, like, I already did, like, the first day I did an oopsie by basically breaking the safety regulations day one. So I basically had chewing gum in my mouth, which is a big no-no. You cannot have chewing tobacco. You cannot have anything chewable in your mouth. You cannot bring food in, nothing. For, because what can happen is, is that there's two things that you need to worry about radiation and contamination. Contamination is kind of like the radioactive schmutz that's like on you. It happens quite often that you just have some contamination on your hands considering what you're working with. I never had the alarm go off on me, but uh, Jake was like worked at the nuclear power plant for so long while I was working with him. It set off like a massive fucking alarm because like it had like a major contamination on him and it was like pretty funny. Contamination is not dangerous. However, if you get that contamination inside of you, that's when it can uh, get a problem because if it's like like some stuff that's like in your stomach or whatever, that can stuff can emit radiation to your vital organs, which is mm. not good, as yeah. you can imagine. Not very good. So you try to get it off pretty quick. Yeah, so the other way of you getting it out is either puking the shit out or shitting your guts out, pretty much. Mm. And you don't want that. So chewing gum is basically a big no-no because that can cause internal contamination so like if i'm like going out and chewing around like potential like if there's dust around that goes into chewing gum i for some reason swallow it and there you go you have big trouble and this guy basically what his job was is just sit at the entrance and basically make sure people follow regulations he's a massive dude very um obese he's like a massive motherfucker we just always called him santa because he has like such like a white beard and like it was like always like there he's from like he was like from south africa and and I'm just like walking by, I'm greeting him, chewing gum in mouth, chewing, chewing, chewing away, grabbing a decimeter. And I just feel a fucking hand on my shoulder. And keep in mind, I'm like a small dude. I'm like five foot six, five foot seven. And then this guy is like six foot four and just like, you're doing something very bad right now. And I'm like, I do this. <laughs> it's like, oh fuck. And I was like, <laughs> you are chewing on something. <laughs> I'm gonna quickly spit that out. Basically, he became like such a fucking meme that we just basically memed about it. Like me and Jake just could not stop laughing about this. Like we basically would like make whole like narratives around this guy. By the way, absolute sweetheart. He like generally he's going through like some tough times right now. And like, I hope everything is well with him right now. So the first day was like a really interesting day. As much as it was an interesting experience, it was one of the most boring jobs. It could be the most boring jobs you can ever do because I was not in a position of doing any document work. So a lot of times we would just go two times into the actual plant. And meanwhile, my other colleagues would be like doing, filling out documents, like doing all the logs and shit and whatnot. Uh, so a lot of times I would be sitting hours upon hours just at my just at the like lounge pretty much the vending machine was my best friend at the time there were times i was supposed to work like for three weeks i literally was was working two weeks of those until the incident happened i would work six days a week uh the first week and then i would work uh all seven days on week two and it was such straining stuff because i would just immediately go to bed wake up and do it all over again and I would not have any time for myself. Pretty much, I lived to work at the time. Which, you can imagine, those days can be very long. I guess we can get into the incident. Oh, lord. I was into week three, the start of week three. I, I was feeling like hell already. At the time, I was start struggling with mental issues because I was having to deal with some drama that was... Like some, some really shitty people that kind of made life hell for me for at the time. It was around the first anniversary of my dad's passing, like the annual anniversary. So I was 
really in a bad headspace. It was one of the reasons that kind of like put the final nail in the coffin, like the, the second to final nail in the coffin. So, which gives you kind of the idea how much of an impact it had to me as, as an individual. I was working on a device, if you will. I was making some measurements. Uh, I was going into some work. One individual was working on a pipe. That pipe was basically one of those pipes that emitted radiation. How, how can you prevent this? Well, a lot of times what, what you do is you put lead mats around. So basically what does lead do? Well, it basically keeps that shit away from you so you can stand next to it. This individual, who I never found out who he was because kind of like it was kept for me. He was working on this pipe and after he finished his work, he never put the lead mats back. Mm. He never put them back. And basically this pipe, while I was working on this device, I had no clue. This pipe was pretty much very close to my face. So I was working and it was pretty much there. And like my decimeter would kick in. But here's the thing. So those decimeters uh, are extremely sensitive at times. So if you drop it, which happens, uh, you give it back to the uh, radiation staff. So you would give it back and they will inspect it. And if it's good, they'll give it, uh, put it back into the machinery. The dosimeter malfunctioned on me because the person that had it before me dropped it mm. quite a considerable height and never put it back in. He never gave it into the irradiation worker. So it malfunctioned on me and it never set off the alarm. So I was in this room for 30 to 40 minutes. I noticed a person walks in fully kitted out. Oh, no. Fully kitted out. And you're not, to be clear. Yeah, like, pretty much the only thing I have is a jumpsuit, because it was a safe zone. Well, not a safe zone, but it was like a low radiation zone. I see him fully kitted out, and I notice underneath there's a red hat, like hard hat, which indicates radiation protection stuff. And he just does this. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. And so basically, he just grabs my arm he grabs my arm and just starts walking out like i'm just like kind of like half-assed like i'm like holy shit i still have like equipment on me like my my little my little fucking measurement thing i just have it around my neck and it's like still stuck to the thing to the device that i'm working on and i'm like flunk and he's like pulling me out right and immediately i get measured i get like measured and i had like massive contamination on my face i had contamination oh. on my chest like, it was all over my, my work clothes. It was all over my heart, hard hat. It was just all over me. So pretty much they stripped me bare. Uh, I just took basically a massive shower. And after the inspection of my decimeter, two millisieverts is, is like the background radiation for a person each year. I had 12.8 in a span of 30 to 40 minutes. Holy shit. Which is pretty much four times in that you would get in like four years of background radiation now down to 30 40 minutes dude and yeah and i guess there was like some points of placebo effects uh but i had a, a minor case of radiation sickness i got booked in to like a uh, a clinic like i got me to check out and like make sure like i was going to be okay I was pretty fine, but I had a, a small case of like radiation sickness, but I was like overnight there. So like, I guess it kind of went like next day or so. I, it's very vivid because I was, I was feeling like shit, honestly. I uh, got like screened, turns out I was okay. I didn't have any internal contamination, so I was fine regarding that. Uh, but they pretty much, I was left with a minimum case of radiation sickness the best way to explain it so radiation sickness is imagine like the symptoms of uh, of a fever but different i was extremely fatigued i felt i felt nauseous i felt like disorders like i was very dizzy all the time just simply put like if i would like walk up a flight of stairs or something i would just be like immensely fatigued i did not get, get anything major I went to being a, a pretty healthy young individual to a individual with quite a few serious conditions. I'm not sure if this has really much a uh, influence on it, but I was quite messed up in my brain. I personally feel at the time it messed me up more mentally than physically. Yeah. Because it was something like, it was like a stuff that I just simply was added on to and like just generally like another burden. Yeah, no, that sounds 
like absolutely extra stress and potentially trauma that you did not need in that moment. There's no way this could have given. This is not like something that could have like messed me up much because again, to understand to how high the secure like safety protocols are, there is like a protocol for every single scenario. You have to stick to the protocol 24 seven. I was left with losing a great opportunity because working for government would set me up for life and it kind of was like the first part of like kind of like my downfall to where i am nowadays which is yeah something i'm i'm potential like losing everything right now like to what i have mm. so sort of like the first thing that kind of sent me into this downward spiral i was basically su suspended to work with pay because it was not my fault there's no way i could have prevented any of this because i did not know simply put i did not know there was there was an in investigation about it for obvious reasons i don't know whatever happened to the person that caused uh, such a major um, mistake whatever his intention was like i would not believe it's laziness because pretty much everybody in the nuclear business if you were took things like so lightly you would have not gotten this far to work in in a nuclear power plant right and i would want this to make this very clear what happened to me was as much as nuclear power plant like nuclear energy is such a controversial thing like it can it gets mentioned constantly in in current politics and whatnot nuclear power is one of the safest things there is when it comes to work again like as for mentioned like you're more likely to die at a desk like die or get injured at a desk job than something ever happening to you what happened to me was uh, just a massive uh, chain of unluck and basically misfortune <laughs> Because pretty much uh, a situation like, for example, to go a little bit more back in history, like Chernobyl, for example, happened because bad protocols and bad staffs and basically not taking nuclear energy serious. So when you say bad protocols, just to clarify, do you mean that the actual engineered protocols done by the people that come up with them were bad or that no one was following them and they were being idiots? Both. Oh boy! So in in the case of Chernobyl, actually, if you if you ever are interested in in what exactly happened, the miniseries from HBO Chernobyl is actually a really good one. That's funny enough is that while I was doing those courses, I actually was watching that miniseries. It's oh. actually really good. <laughs> like if you if you're interested in stuff, uh, go check it out. It's good stuff. But it was pretty much a case of like bad protocols because Chernobyl, for example, is a thing called an RBMK reactor, and those are notorious. As a matter of fact, they're still actually. To this day, there are still RBMK reactors used in the uh, post-Soviet Union. They're still in use to this day, and they're currently in the process of being shut down. Mm. That, that's a process that will take to like 20 in the 2030s. But a little bit back to on how kind of things went down is the aftermath, I suppose. So I was suspended with pay. After the revision ended, I was still studying I, I was still offered like a, a job like at the company it's like once i graduate i can work full time and and honestly i'm not gonna lie i kind of thought i will take jake's advice about moving out of country because then i would only have to work like in total of two months per year and just live cheaply and maybe do my own stuff which would be fantastic because like the payout that i got was like absurd for like two three weeks worth the government paid for me to work two three weeks i, I got paid give or take holy shit for two weeks two three weeks damn dude I, i'm telling you uh working for the government's great yeah so this shit would have set me up for life yeah and that's like for revision periods i don't know how you get paid just working as an average worker at the power plant i was still like kind of like uh looking into working for the uh, uh nuclear power plant and it was like pretty much i was still i was still hired but they couldn't let me work because of the dose i took yeah so i was in a position it's like hey it's like oh we might let you work at this and like it kept changing and changing and changing i was like okay i cannot keep going like this i'm getting fucked over by my mainly my stepfather at the time because i like i was moving out in may last year in april when the accident happened i went homeless oh wow for pretty much a month because i couldn't move in at the time like i i had signed the papers and everything and uh, like I already had like a rent contract and whatnot. I'm still living actually in the same building, just one floor down now because <laughs> it's mm. cheaper. I live in the basement. I'm a basement dweller. Great. <laughs> Average VR chat player. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, so after I'd done that, I just said, okay, I was like doing a side, side job at the time and it was not 
uh, which I lost, unfortunately. I mm. uh, kind of did an oopsie and I got fired. Um, but um, the nuclear power plant was just like, could not make its mind up. I was like, okay, I'm quitting. I'm going to lay off because I'm I'm not sure if, I, if I'm going to get paid. It's like very fucking scary shit. So I started getting educated in uh, crowd security. I started to uh, actually get a lot of contacts uh, with a lot of like the musicians I know nowadays. So nowadays... I mostly work in uh, music production. That's like the only thing I do. I sometimes do like soccer games and whatnot. Working in this branch gave me a lot of opportunities. And I'm actually currently looking into working as a guitar tech. Mm. And that would be amazing because uh, that means I would have to go on tour. And I want to go on tour because I, I love this shit. I love this kind of stuff. I love music. Do you think that not having that job anymore at the plant and going on the life journey that you have has helped you discover that and recognize your true passions? Yes. It has allowed me to more embrace in what I'm doing, what I love. Like, as much as uh, I'm struggling right now, it has been truly uh, fun to work at these productions, and it's been truly fun to do this stuff myself. Like, no matter what I do, no matter if it's and it's a gig, and no matter if it's a VR gig, even if it's just me, me streaming music and, like, performing, it's honestly a pleasure because when I get on stage and I have like sort of this, these in, intimate moments, people seem to really enjoy it. Like it's one of the most amazing feelings ever. And it's the most rewarding thing ever. It's truly a passion, but also a dedication. If that's your main thing, there's so many great acts out there, which just gets covered up by mainstream media, which is something I truly hate uh, because there's so many wonderful acts. I know a lot of local acts. I would love to share it with you sometime. If you generally like uh, more of the metal stuff and like, if you're more interested in it, because our metal scene is absolutely massive when it comes to the underground stuff, but there's so much talent and so much dedication that people put in in their craft. And it just gets covered up by someone that potentially has one pot, like one popular song. And it's just pretty much insulting. Yeah. I, I learned a lot of instruments during my time. I, I learned violin. I've learned guitar. I've learned bass. I've learned piano. Touched so many instruments. Like I even uh, have like touched like the most weirdest shit you would ever think of. Like, for example, an Armenian duduk, which I don't, you know, if you, it's such like an unknown instrument, but it's been an outlet. It's something that i can enjoy and i and i hope that i can do it eventually uh as a full-time thing not aiming at it that's not my main priority because right now i'm trying to i'm just trying to sell all my shit right now i'm trying to get i'm trying to get out of my shithole that is that i'm currently in if i can do this full-time i will definitely do it because of my the friends i have in chicago i started even painting i am a person that needs to create that has become my goal in life to be able to create and leave something behind for the next person mm. to inspire tell me a story i want to hear it you might think it's boring but i'm interested tell me a story i want to hear it you might think it's boring but i'm interested